Sir, the Lord is good. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Turn with me, if you will, to Luke's Gospel and the 15th chapter. We, on our Father's Day message on last week, I did not get to finish it. And I would like to go ahead and share the last part of that today, if you will. Bless the Lord. Let me read the text, and that way we'll be refreshed in what we were talking about. Beginning at the 11th verse of the 15th chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Then he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. He would gladly have filled his stomach with the parts that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. When he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. When he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion on him, had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe, and put it on him, put a ring on his hand, sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf here and kill it. Let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. But his older son was in the field. As he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. He said to him, your brother has come and because he has received him. Safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, lo, these many years I have been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as his son, this son of yours, came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you're always with me, and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad. For your brother was dead and is alive again, was lost and is found. Blessed be the name of the Lord God forevermore. There's a lot of lessons we can learn from this text as we look at, um, as we look at this text, and we shared many of them on last week, and you can go ahead and stream that and listen to it if you were not here. I want to pick up around the 25th verse of that text, and I want to talk about the lost son that stayed home, the prodigal that stayed home. We always consider the prodigal to be the one that left, 
But when you really feed the whole, really look into the whole story, there was just as much prodigal in the one that stayed home as there was the one that left. And I wanted, I wanted to look at this because I, I, in these lessons here, there's a lot of things that we can identify with within the confines of the church because we're at home. And I see some of the things, there's a lot of things that was demonstrated in the life of the son that stayed home that is quite evident in the general vicinities of our churches. And so it may, something might bite you, but that's okay. Just stand still, and nobody will never know you were bitten. <laughs> Verse 25 of this text says, Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew nearer to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. He said to him, Your brother has come and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. Now, just normal thinking as we look at this, and someone reveals to us that, you know, your brother had been away for a while and your brother came home, what would be the normal response? You would probably want to drop everything and run home and meet to see your brother. You haven't seen him in a long time. Not this boy. The Bible says he was angry. And my question would be, why would you be angry? He is angry. The Bible says he was angry and would not go in. He was angry and would not go in. Why? Why would, not you, be, why would you be angry and not go in to your, and meet your brother? Why wouldn't you? There's something that's going on inside of this, this young man that stayed home, something that is concealed and shut up, and you would never know it unless something happened. Now, in, in this Christian life that we live, many people, there are a lot of things that shut up inside of people, and you would never know it unless there is a crisis. And then when there's a crisis, then those hidden things, these angers, these frustrations, these things that are shut up on the inside of us begin to come out when we enter into certain crises. And so this, the, 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 the son that stayed home, the message was that your brother has come home and he is, the Bible says, he was angry and would not go in. He was angry. There is an element of self-righteousness that's in him. But why, why wouldn't you go in? Why wouldn't you go in? Why are you angry? Because no one has done anything to him. Think about it. No one has done anything to him. His root, no one has upset his root, everything, his routine, nothing has changed. But yet he is angry because of something that's going on outside of him. The Bible says, but the father came out. The son would not go in, but the father came out. Now, here's, here's something that, are, that we can look at here. God is not concerned, he is not moved by whether you are this prodigal at home or whether you are the prodigal that left. It doesn't bother him one way or the other. And I want us to see some. You'll be able to see something here when you see the attitude of the father. Now, we know that this story here that is told is a representation of God and his people. That's what it is. It's a picture that, of God and his people. And so when we see the conduct of the one that stayed home, and then we see the act, the, what the, how the father responds to him. Now, you know, you, you, would, you, you, would think in just, you would think that the father would go and yell at him, but he doesn't. See, I want, us to really, I want us to see the real picture of God's love here. The son would not go in, but the father came out to him. Because you got to know, the father loves the son that went away, and he loves the one that stayed home the same. 
Now, that's something that we can learn because many times when we are interacting with people and the way that we interact with people, even in our effort to witness with people, sometimes I think that we think God has a certain feeling for those people, a different one that he has for us. Sometimes I think that God, we think that God likes us better than he do them. And that's the reason many times we lash out at people that we consider to be outside of the ark of safety and we beat our gums and we just go ahead and we just, I mean, we just, I mean, we ragtag people. We go out and we see things and we, oh, we repel at some of the things that we see. And we just, oh, we get off. I mean, we get stewed up about that. Well, that is the, exactly the same thing that this prodigal son that stayed home, the same thing that happened to him. He got mad because his younger brother had come home when in turn it should have been happy about it. I, sometimes I, I've listened to preaching sometimes and I hear some things that they preach, they preach like we're mad. Dear God, come on. We are sent to take the gospel to the world. We are not sent to get upset with people because listen to me, People only do what they know to do. And for some reason, we, we, we think that we are better. And we don't say it, but we do. We think that we are better. When we look at people, particularly people that we consider to be doing wrong, and we talk about them in a very negative way, that's the same spirit that was in this son that stayed home. It's the same spirit. And the thing of it is, we think God's in agreement with us. See, the son that stayed home, he wouldn't go in. He figured, and, and it was mad. He was mad at everybody. See, he is mad inside. I have found this out in dealing with people. People that have problems with others. And that, now watch, I'm going to get real tight with this. Even when it comes to husband and wife. When you, you know, you, you know I, 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 have, I, I interact with a lot of people. And they're, 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 they're angry. Their anger is focused at the one out there, but they're really mad on the inside. The problem is on the inside. Because I'm telling you, once you get you right, you don't have to worry about nobody else. See, I'm telling you, that person that you see in the mirror, in the morning, that is your worst enemy. The in, this, young, this young man that stayed home, he was his own enemy. But he is mad. He's mad. And you see now, you're like, well, why is he mad? But, but the father, there's a demonstration of the father's love here that we can learn some things from. The father came out and pleaded with him. And so he said, answered and said to his father, this is, this, this is the prodigal that's home. He said, lo these many years I've been serving you. I, 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 never transgressed your commandments at any time. How many times have we found fault with other people and say something to this effect, I would never do that. It's the same thing. Ah, you know what you've created? You've created a system whereby you are consider yourself to be justified by what you do. And that, my friend, is definitely deadly wrong. Galatians 2, 16. Pick Galatians chapter 2, 16. This is, this is important because, see, I don't, I don't want to just tell you a nice little story about a prodigal son. No, it's not about that. I want to show you, you, so that you can be transformed. See, some of us think that we got it made. No, you know, you long, you missed, you, you still a lot of ways to go. All of us have a way to go. 
Galatians 2.16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. Nobody is going to be justified by what they do. The Bible says, for by grace are we saved, and that none of us says it is the gift of God. But listen to this young man here. I never transgressed your commandments. I don't care if you never transgressed it. You are still a jerk. I don't care. There's nothing that you can do to justify you. See, we need to understand. I'm telling you. I tell you what. I, I see. I, I can talk about. I talk about me. One of the best things. One of the greatest things. One of the great things that God did for me was show me me. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't you know. I, I, I found out who I was. When when my life started to really change is when I found out when I when I found out who I was. I found out who I found out me. And, and God straightened, he straightened me, he really straightened me out. Yeah. See, God don't care, he got, God will straighten you out. I don't care how bad you get, you can get upset, but I don't care. God will straighten you out. If you hang out with him, he'll straighten you out. Amen. And God was talking, he was teaching me about loving people. Yeah. And what, but the, but the fact that what people do, that they only, people do what they do only because they don't know any better. Nobody operates on knowledge that they don't have. And I'm telling you, we, the church, the Christians, have a bad habit of finger pointing. I'm telling you, you do. And we, we, we've done it so long that we think it's normal, and we think God points fingers too. But he doesn't. If you go back to, the, to one of the most classic scriptures, the Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe on him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Then he went on to say, the next verse, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. Did you get that? God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now think about some of the things that we say. We spend a lot of time condemning people. You will start growing when you see, when you find out who you are. I know it happened to me. When God got through to me and began to show me me, because let me tell you something. I'm telling you, you're your worst enemy. I'm telling you, you are your worst enemy. That whoever you see in that mirror in the morning, if you can conquer that person that pops up in that mirror in the morning, then you will excel. When God began to show me me, I, did, I come to a point, I love people more than I've ever in my life. See, see, until you find out who you are, until you know you and get you under control, you can't love people. You don't know how. See, I'm telling you, we don't know nearly as much as we think we know. You don't, you don't, you don't. But God began to reveal, he showed me, me. And he was talking to me. He was, I'm, reading, I'm reading the Bible. I'm, you know, I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm, I'm a Bible reader. I read, I pray, yeah. If you ain't careful, you'll think your prayer, praying and your reading will make you something. If you ain't very careful, you'll think just because I go to prayer meeting, just because I read my Bible, I'm all right. <laughs> I was leading the prayer meeting. I wasn't just going. I'm leading the prayer meeting. When God jacked me up, showed me me. And showed me how I had missed it. Dear God. And I had to bow my head. Had to bow my head because I had missed it. And he showed me how to love people. He told me how he felt about people. He told me how he was kind to people. He told me how he was kind to the unthankful. And I'm like, damn, that, that, that took me. Because I'd never thought about it. 
I had never thought about it. All I could think about, you know, unthankful, rude, you know, Jesus-hating people. Dear God, I thought it's legal to talk about them. I thought it was legal. No. 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 God told me, he said, listen, I'm, I'm kind to the unthankful. I thought, and I hadn't, how many times have I read this book, but read, read the verses, and never saw it? He said, I'm kind to the unthankful. And it broke me. It broke me. God, did I, 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 it's not, it's not, I have to. And it changed my thinking. And God began, I, God developed me to a point where I, I love, right now, I, I love people more than I have ever since I've been on this planet. I just love people. Remember what he's talking about? That? I just love people. Just, I don't care what kind of people, all of them. doesn't matter. What you do does not alter my love for you. Because, what, okay, if you, all you got to do is just think a little bit. What you do don't hurt me unless I'm a, 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 a hypocrite or something like that. I'm, you know, because see, we, we think that, see, we have this thing of thinking like as long as someone else is doing something worse than I am, I'm better. You don't say that, but that's what you think. And all you do is just find somebody that's worried. And that's why people complain about it. That's why you, every time you see someone do something, you got to say something. Did you see that? Oh, the very ideal. You know, I'm, t I'm telling you. That's why people have to, they have to, they, they can't see something wrong and not say anything. That's how you, that's how you can find out where you are. Can you see something totally out of Kelsey and keep your mouth shut? Can you do that? Can you walk down the street and see something that you know and everybody knows is wrong? The devil knows it's wrong. And you just keep your mouth shut and keep on walking. Can you do that? You'll find out where you are. You'll find out if you're a product at home or not. You know, why you, you know why we have to say something? Because when I say something, it makes me look better. Because I wouldn't do that. Makes me look better. I can feel better about me. No good. No good. No good. Number one, number one, what profit is it for you to rehearse what someone else is doing wrong? What profit is it? You're just continuing to reestablish it. There's no profit in that. I, I, you know, it, See, watch this. Yeah, if you can do something to help the situation, do it. But if you can do nothing, if you can do nothing about it, if there's nothing for you to do, then the, the, the best thing you can do, if there's nothing you can do, the best for you to do is... Because watch this. Anything that, that doesn't receive attention will go away anyway. There were times when Jesus was asked questions that he didn't even answer. He would ask him things he wouldn't even answer. Why won't you answer? So he tells you, really no need to answer that. You hear what I'm saying? See? No, we must understand. And, and, but this is going to help you to grow. See, I'm telling you, you are the, you are the one that's hindering your growth. You. Now, I know, we, I know that's hard to take. I know it's hard to take. But you are the one that's hindering your growth and development. Nobody else. Nobody else. It's you. Get you straight. Get you right. You get you right. And then you'll grow. Shut your mouth. And that's, and that's much of it what is required for you to shut up. Because death and life is in the power of the tongue. They that love it will eat the fruits thereof. Well, God confirms it here in us. He said, listen, knowing that a, knowing that a man is not justified by, his, by the works of the law, 
There is no list of do's and don'ts that you can come up with that will justify you. If you don't ever walk on the left side of the street, if you don't ever put the left shoe on the right foot, if you don't ever do any of the, if, make your list, make it as long as you want to, and you keep every last one of them, and when you keep everything you have on the list, when you keep it, you are still wrong. Please understand that. Please understand that. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. That is the only justification you have. Is faith in Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Christ Jesus, that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. Listen. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. No flesh. Paul talked about this over in the 13th chapter of Romans. I mean, of 1 Corinthians. Though I give my body to be burned, do I do all of these many things? Do I do all of this? Do I, do I have faith to do this? I have not love. Poof. Nothing. 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 But this young man at home, he didn't know this. He said, I never transgressed your commandment. Which makes him better than the son that went away. He felt good. I never transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet, you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. Now this young man got a real, he got a lot of problems. He got a lot of problems, don't even know it. You know, over in, over in the 16th, 6th chapter, I think of Proverbs, 6th chapter, around the 16th verse, God said, there's six things I hate. There's six of them, and of course it was, it was in the seven, so it says seven, if you read that. But there's six things he hates. Well, there's two things I hate. And my, I can be like my dad. I, I, there's two things I hate. There's two things I hate. I hate poverty and I hate ignorance. Both of them will utterly destroy you. The devil uses both of them to, for destruction. And I hate it. I hate poverty. And I, God does too. And I hate ignorance. How many times do you read? And I want you to know. I don't, I don't want you to. I, I want you to know. 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 Ignorance is not a is not a curse word. Ignorance means you just don't know. You just simply don't know, and you can be destroyed by not knowing. Listen to this young man here. I never transgressed your commandment at any time. Yet you never gave me a goat. He is ignorant. He doesn't even know that all that his father has is his. He doesn't know that. He doesn't know that. Ignorance. My people are destroyed because they just don't know. The Bible says lack of knowledge. They lack knowledge. Well, that's true. They lack knowledge, you don't know. You just don't know. So I hate ignorance. Ignorance will destroy you. Now, everything, once you get on the downward sparrow, everything, you mad at everybody. I, and I've, I've experienced this in, 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 in with people. You know, I, you know even, even with, you know, with, in counseling with husband and wife, they're not mad at the husband. They act like they are. Or they're mad. She's not mad at her. You know, he's not mad at his wife. You, when you, if you listen to them, they're just mad. They're mad at themselves. They're just mad. They're just mad. Right. Say, listen, 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 listen to me real carefully. If the love of God is not residing inside of you, you are mad. It's going to come out one way or another. It's going to come out in all different ways. But listen to me real carefully. God has poured out his love in our hearts by his spirit. 
And if that's not true, if you are not walking in that, you are mad inside. And it's going to come out of your mouth because of the abundance of the heart, the mouth don't speak. You can hold it peace for a little while. I usually, when I'm, 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 when I'm usually counseling, uh, you know, married people and they come in and get married, and I tell them, I say, you know, you don't know one another. They think they do. She, I tell her, you don't know him, and hear him, you don't know her. You'll begin to learn, you'll find out, you'll learn one another when you start eating out of the same plate, using the same toilet, you are sleeping in the same bed, you are washing out the same basin, then you're going to learn one another. But you don't, I don't care, you can tell me how much, tell me how, much you, how much you love them. Yes, you do. But you don't know them. You're going to know them after you move in with them. That's when you're going to find out who you got. But, but the just shall live by faith. <laughs> you, you, know, you don't leave when you find out who you got. The just live by faith. <laughs> you, 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 stay, you stay there by faith. But you don't know them. You got to know you, but, so you, but you got to first know yourself. And God will reveal you to you. God will do that. This young man, he, he boasted of his obedience to his father's commandments. And then his anger started to spew out. His anger began to spew out. First, he, his first anger that spewed out of him was that it was toward his daddy. He charged his daddy with not giving him a goat. <laughs> now, come on. That's what he did. That's what's written. You would even give me a goat. He's pointing his finger at his dad. He's mad at his father. That's anger is flowing coming at his father. Now the father just demonstrated to him the highest level of love. When, when he was mad and his, his frustration was toward his brother, his father showed love toward him by coming out pleading with him. Yes. And then he is the first one, he, the boy points his finger, he points his finger at his daddy. You wouldn't give me no goat. You see, there's no rationale to the devil. He'll kill you and mess you up and have you so mangled you won't know how you got there. It doesn't matter. He doesn't matter. He knows that his father has provided, but, he, but his anger. How many people do you know that point to have mad at God? They get, they, they, they're mad at God. I, I've, I've seen a lot of that. I'm sure you've seen it. They're mad at God. Where the first, his first frustration, the first manifestation of his anger is really toward his father. Now, he's supposed to be mad at his brother, right? I don't know why. But, it's, but, 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 but it shows toward his father. You wouldn't give me a goat so I could have a party with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours, not my brother, You see what I mean? You see what his pride does for him? He can't even call him brother. Son of this son of yours. Do you, you, you see who he's pointing the finger at? His daddy. And this is the one that has shown the most love toward him, and he's showing it, and he's pointing the finger at it. I'm trying to show you how stupid the devil will make you. He's pointing his finger at his daddy. You wouldn't give me no good. And now, Soon as this son of yours, that son of yours, that son of yours, that son of a gun, that son of yours, that son of yours, that, now, this is, now he's talking about his brother, that son of yours, you know, that son of yours, you know, kind of like some parent do when one of the kids make them mad, they, they, your son did this. You see what your daughter did? <laughs> he do it. You people don't, don't tell it. I bet everybody in this room done, have done that. Yeah, because you're mad at them. You ain't about to call them your daughter, your son. 
Yosi, you see, I see what your son did. <laughs> same devil, same, same devil, same, same devil, same devil. As soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your, your livelihood, you shouldn't have even given it to him. You gave it to him. You shouldn't have given it to him. Making sure he know everything he did. With harlots, hanging out with them sporting girls. <laughs> now see, he probably wanted to hang out with them, but he's scared. <laughs> Usually people are that way. They're that way. They, they want to do the same thing. But they don't have the guts to do it. He wanted to do it. <laughs> you, there he is, to his charge his father again. You killed the fatted calf. You did that. You let him do it. You did it. You did it. Now, he's, see, see, you, do you see why he is venting his frustrations? But all of this, who is he mad at? He is really mad at himself. See, people that are angry, when people, what they call, you ever see people, they call themselves in a bad mood? They mad inside. And they're like, oh, I'm in a bad mood. I don't want to talk to you. And then if, you, if they say something, it is so short you'll miss it. <laughs> why, would it why would you speak short to someone? Because you are mad inside. Amen. See, you, see, I'm telling you, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, the, 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 the great lesson here, this great lesson here is really for us to work on us. And I know we, we get, we're so busy, we're just busy doing stuff. You need to manage you. You need to work on you. Because you are your problem. Your frustration. The only reason that you say ugly things to other people is because you are mad inside. And what you're saying, it, it spews out on other people. You do, you do that. You don't care who you spew. You, you spew it on the dog. It don't matter. Make the dog want to leave. Dog want to leave. He don't want to hang around you. <laughs> no, because you're, you're mad. And watch this. When, you ch when your attitude shifts, the mad is still in there. All that mad is waiting for is something to trigger it. You come downstairs, there's a pair of shoes in the middle of the floor, and there it goes, triggers again. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? shoes on that floor. Got a chance to vent to, 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 to your madness. It has nothing to do with the shoes. It has nothing to do with the shoes. You need to go fast and pray. And conquer that devil that's inside of you. Now I'm telling you, see, because see, I'm telling you, we fail because we, we, over, we walk past the first one that needs to be evangelized. And going to go evangelize somebody else. And you walk past yourself. Jesus said it in this way. He said, you get the log out your eye. Right. Before you go trying to blow the trash out of somebody else's eye. He, Jesus knew, he knew, he knew how people were. He, he knew, he, he told us. You know what I mean? And, I, and I, I, that's why I tell on me. I, that's why I, tell, I, I publicly tell on me. I was a mess. I was a mess inside until God straightened me out. I had a problem with people. I had a bunch of people that I thought was in sin. I said that I thought was in sin. See, we got our own little checklist inside, you know. What we call sin and what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. And if you didn't, if you didn't meet the mark on my list, you know, you hang around me long enough, you go, you're going to be able to tell it. Because it's going to show. And I, I, listen, I was that I listen, I didn't know I was like that. Until God, see, God ain't scared of you. I got to do you. God ain't scared of you. He'll tell you about yourself. He's told me about me. And I'm glad, I'm glad, because it, it really, it, 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 it helped me immensely. He said, Yo, you got to go back and fix. So here's what I tell a lot of people, and this is the truth. If you spend, your, spend, your, 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 your spend time 
on you. Spend time on you. Getting you right. Through, and, it's, and, and you can't fix you. The way that you do it is by way on these knees and in God's word. You can't fix you. It's just like I have talked to people. I've talked to alcoholics. And I remember this one guy was talking to him, and I told him, I said, listen, man. I said, don't you know that whiskey killing you? He said, yes. Mm. <laughs> no, he, I'm, I'm, tell, I'm telling you. <laughs> he can't help himself. He can't. Right. He knows it. I said, don't you know it? He said, yes, I know it's killing me. And yet he picked up the glass and just, because he can't, you can't fix you. You need to understand that. Yes, you are mad inside and you can't do nothing about it. But when you fall down at Jesus' feet, when you fall down at Jesus and tell him how mad you're on the inside, then, then he can do something with you. But as long as you're walking around with that facade on, acting like you're all right, God will let you do that. He'll let you stay mad all your life. Mad and miserable. Because they go together. Misery and madness goes together. You are mad inside and you're miserable inside. And everybody you come in contact with is going to spew out on them. Because you haven't humbled yourself under the mighty hand of God and fixed you. God, that's what God said. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. That he may exalt you. Yes. Give yourself to my word. Attend to my word. Climb your ears to my say, Don't let my word depart from your eyes. Get on your knees and stay there. Yes, Lord. Amen. That's what will fix you. And let me, let me and here's what I here's what I found out. Here's what I've learned. Once I focused on me and got me squared away. Other people was no problem at all. God, I didn't know it was so easy. Other people, people don't bother me in the least. I don't care what they're doing. Watch this. Okay, okay. You can reason it out. How can someone else's wrong hurt you? It can. You don't have to repent. I don't have to repent for your wrong. I don't, have to do, I don't have to do anything about your wrong. That's all on you. Your wrong only affects me when I allow it to. That's when it can affect me. But if you want to do, that's your choice. If you don't want to eat breakfast, oh, my stomach is not growling. I'm not upset with you. No, what you do don't, don't hurt me. You have to understand. I, I began to understand when I got me straight. But you see the, see, the thing before, I was using other people's wrong to keep me justified. And you, you do, people do it without knowing it, without thinking about it. Using other people's faults to keep your own self justified. Well, I don't do that. I never transgress your commandment. See it? You can't, you can't do that. You can't, you can't use other people's wrong to justify you. No, no. No flesh. No flesh is going to stand justified before God. Only justification you're going to get is faith in Jesus Christ. But as soon as this your son came, who has divided, and he just goes and began to rehearse his brother's shortcomings, he devoured your livelihood with the girls, with harlots. Those are sporting girls. That's not a term we use today. They used to call them prostitutes today. Same thing. Half-dressed women. You, charging his father, look at that, charging his father, you 
killed the calf after he was down there with them girls. Oh, shame on you. Do you see that? Do you see that? Do you see the implication there? You are condoning what he did. And you supposed to be my father. This boy got a problem. This boy has got a problem. He said to him, son, now listen to this. Uh, you got you to you see this. You got to see God's love here. See, God is not moved by your and my frustrations. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This prodigal that stayed home is so frustrated, so angry inside. And the father brings balance. He is the one that reconciles us. The young son that went away, was, did he do wrong? Of course he shouldn't have done what he did. But it, the father not moved by that. And the son that stayed home that's just as bad, that's mad at his brother, that doesn't bother the father either. Do you see? Do you see? I, I want you to show you God's love here. What God does, he is the one that can take the both and love both of you to a point where you will be totally reconciled unto him and be one again. Amen. That's really is what God is doing with the whole world right now as we speak. Amen. This father is a picture of Almighty God reconciling the world unto himself. As this father, she gives a, presents a picture here, reconciling his two sons unto himself. In the beginning, now watch it, look at, look at the whole general scenario. In the beginning, there was the two sons happy at home with father, living the, living the pros, prosperous life. There was a glitch. The young boy left. Adam left. Division. It's a mess. The world is a mess. Then the young son comes to himself and comes home. And the son that stayed home, now he's messed up because I don't want you back here. That's, that's what it comes to. I don't want you back here. Go back to the swines. But the father steps in and he reconciles the one that left and the one that stayed and he brings them back. Watch what he does here. The first thing he does is call him, is, is all of the accusations. Now look at this, look at this. All of the accusations that this son has made toward his father in complaining about his brother, all of these accusations, watch what the father says. The first thing he calls him is son. Wow. 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 Isn't that amazing? Amen. The first thing, the first thing, the first thing the father calls him is son. Listen, all of your frustrations, all your anger, all of your madness has not changed me one ounce. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. All that you and I have gone through, Father has never changed. He is the same. And as, I don't care whatever you, he will still look at you and say, son. He says, son, look at this. You are always with me. Knowledge, this boy, he didn't know that. And all that I have is yours. N news, this is news to that boy. This is news to him. News to him. 
God tells us to do what? Ask and you shall receive. Amen. This kid, this boy, I, he probably didn't really want to go. But it was a good thing to make an excuse about. But all he had to do is ask for the thing. What does God tell you? Ask and you will receive. Now the father tells him, he said, all that I have is yours. Why, ignorance had robbed this kid of that. That's why I tell you, I hate ignorance. And I hate poverty. I don't like it. I, I, I hate it. I, I really hate it. I, I don't like it. I, I don't like it. I, I, God don't like it. That's why I, I teach my, I try to teach my kids. And my, well, my kids, they, 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 I, I didn't know much more than they did. But my grandkids, I have a chance to take, help my grandkids. I'm teaching my grandkids, before they get 50, they can all be millionaires. Yeah, they can all be millionaires. The way, the way I'm teaching them. Yeah, they can all be millionaires. I, I, I didn't, if I had known, I would have been one too. But God didn't, God didn't tell me all, God didn't tell me. See, I was a little late getting the news. You know what I mean? You know, Amen. some of my kids, my kids miss it. Well, they, they didn't do it. They're not doing too bad. But, but the grandkids, I want to make sure they get it. Amen. I want to make sure they get it. Because I, I don't like, I hate poverty. And I won't see them in poverty. Amen. I won't see my grandkids in poverty. Amen. I refuse. Why? Because I know. I have information now. I'm not as ignorant as I was with my own kids. This, this boy was ignorant. I hate ignorance. And I hate poverty. Amen. And I can do something about it. He says, son, listen, listen. He says, son, you are always with me. And all that I have is yours. I have gotten information that all that the father has is my, see, that's why my kids, my grandkids are not going to be in poverty. Yeah, amen. I know that. I know that now. Yeah. Because I know that all the Father has is mine. Yeah, and all I have is theirs. Yeah. You, you follow me? Yeah. That's why they won't. You, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. See, 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 this is, see we, don't, we, don't, we need to know, do, when you hear the word of God, you need to do more than just shout. Right. Amen. You need to get up and go out and make application of this stuff. Yeah, you can shout when you're in here, but you better get out here and apply these principles to your life. Amen. That's what the Word of God is for. That's why God said, attend to my Word. That's why God don't let this Word to profit your life. Because God expects you to take this Word and go apply it to your life and live this life. Jesus come that we might have what? Now, if I give you a glass of water, what do you do with it? You drink it. If I give you a piece of bread, what do you do? You eat it. If I give you a life, what do you do with it? You live it. Amen. Jesus has been saying, I come to give you life. He is waiting for you to live it. Your purpose on this planet is to live the life that Jesus gave you so other people can see you. Your purpose on this earth is not to go get a second job. Your purpose and calling is to live the life that Jesus gave you. Amen. Because when you live the life that Jesus gave you, you're going to look like a disciple of his. Wow. Amen. You're going to look like a living epistle. Praise God. And people will read you. Amen. That's Praise what he called you to do. Amen. He didn't call you to hustle. God, we need to learn that. We have are, we are been impeded. We haven't gone as far as we've gone because we have been ignorant. Mm. That's why I hate ignorance. And I hate poverty. I don't like it. God doesn't like it. Amen. God hates it so bad, he sent Jesus to get it to, so we could get rid of it. Amen. He said, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper. Dear God, that's God's 
wish list for me. I know it is because it's written in his word. It's his desire. I do not apologize for being taken from the cows to where I live. David did not apologize for being taken from behind the sheep to take to the, to the king's mansion. He did not apologize. Amen. Neither will I. Amen. Neither will I. I won't apologize and I won't hide. See, we, see we've, been, we've, been, we've been sold a bill of goods by the devil that wasn't right. People, people, did you know the general populace see the church as some little impoverished group that, you know what I mean, that's just, 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 just throwing a little bone here once in a while? Yeah. Did you know the, much of the world sees the church that way? Yeah. It is so wrong. It is so wrong. Yeah. That's why when they go clean out the closet, they want to take the junk down to the church. Don't bring your junk down here because I don't want it. That's what they do. First, first thing they say, take it down to the church. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to show you how people think. Yeah. They don't believe. They don't, they don't, they don't see. We have a, see. And we have helped the world by not following God's mandate ah. and being who we're supposed to be. Right. Right. That's right. Any of the blessing of God come on you, we try to hide it. Uh -huh. I don't want anybody to think I'm somebody. I am somebody. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? God has raised you up so that you can let your life shine before men so they can see your good work. That's why God raised you up. He's all that I have is yours. Why does he say that? Because he wants the world to know that. God wants the world to know that. That's when they're going to come in. Son, all that I have is yours. All that I... Do you hear that? Now, well, you know, there's no question about whether this is a depiction of God. We know that. All that I have is yours. When are we going to start acting like that? When are we going to start talking like that? When are we going to start living like that? I'll tell you when it's going to happen. When we come together. When we allow John 17 to become a, a reality to us. Amen. And we become one. Amen. And you're going to see the glory of God like you've never seen it before. That's when the world is going to see it. The world, so the world might believe that you sent me. Amen. Son. You are always with me. All that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry. It was right, son. The father is speaking authoritatively now. No, you got a problem with it, but you are wrong. It's right for me to welcome him home. It was right that we should make merry and be glad. It was right that we, we, including you, dude, it was right that we should make merry. What is he doing? He is reconciling them together. For your brother, you won't call him brother, I'm going to call him your brother. He wouldn't call him brother, you know. He called him this son of yours. Your brother, the father is speaking with authority here. Your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. It's right for you to bow your head and come and fall at your brother's feet. And become united again. This is the message that God has given to us. People, we, we don't have a problem. When I look at the poverty that's raping the church, literally, that's raping God's people, lack, and I look at the ignorance 
that has robbed God's people. I'm talking about ignorance is robbing the people of God, and we got the Bible in our hand. This is not so you can just read your little Bible verse. This word is for you to attend to until the inside of you change. You can't change you. But you get on this word. You get into a church where you can, where you can hear the word of God until something change on the inside. And just, listen, no, no. Hitting and missing is not going to do it. That's what people have failed, yeah. hitting and missing and wondering, why can't I get blessed? Because you're a mess. <laughs> That's why you can't get blessed. Yeah. And you won't allow the word of God to change you. That's right. That's right. You get in this book and you get on your knees and you stay there until stay God there. show up. Yeah. I'm, there is no other way. You, I, go get all the jobs you want. I don't care. You're going to be in the same mess. But you don't need another job. That's right. You need a fresh Bible. Oh, yeah. And you need some knee pads. You can buy those knee pads, you know. <laughs> I got me a knee pad. I, I got me a... Hey, I got me a... Do, I, do, do. I got one in my office. I got a kneeling pad. Amen. Amen. Well, I get on my knees. I don't be hurting my knees. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but get, go get you a kneeling pad. Yeah. And get you a Bible. Because people... That is your success. Amen. You'll find the first thing you're going to learn. The first thing you're going to learn is who you are. Amen. Amen. You're going to find out you're not, you're not nearly what you thought you was. Yes, sir. And God will talk to you. Yes, he will. And he'll reveal you to you. Amen. And when you find out who you are. Yes, sir. And accept who God is. Yes. And know that all that he has is yours. Oh. Something's going to happen to you that mm. never happened before. Mm -hmm. There's a change going to come over. And, and here's the way it is. It's going to grow over you. It's not, going to, it's not something that just ta-da. Right. You're going to grow yeah. into this. And all of a sudden, you're going to wake up one day, and you're going to wonder, how in the world did I get like this? <laughs> this book. Wow. This book. The prodigal that stayed home. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Every knee is, every head's bowed. Think of God's love. I, I can assure you, God is not upset with you. Whether you left home, if you're the prodigal that left home, or if you're the one that's at home, the love of God is the same for you. Uh, people... People need to know that. You need to know that. You need to know that God is not upset with how you have been living. He's not moved by that. But God wants you to know what he has provided for you. He wants you to know. One place God says, eyes have not seen nor ears heard, neither have entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those that love him. God has things that he has provided for you that you know nothing about. The wonderful life that Jesus came to give you is available for you to walk in. You make a decision within you. you I, I can't make your choices. You make a decision whether or not you want to do God's purpose and plan. I know for me, I, I gave up, I, I, don't, I really don't have an agenda. The only agenda that I have is to do what God wants me to do. That's all I want to do. That's my desire. Whatever God wants me to do, I, I, don't, I don't have a separate agenda. I want, to, I want to help people. I just want to do what God called, that's what God called me to do. He called me to help people. I just, I just want to love people and I want to help them. That's all I want to do. I want to love people and I want to help them. You got to, every person got to come to God for himself. You got to, sometimes, you know, we, 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 we think we're doing what we're supposed to do, but sometimes you need to stop and reevaluate. Yeah. You need to just stop and say, Lord, am I, am I really on track? You may very well be on track. I'm not saying you're not on track. 
But you, sometimes you may need to just stop and just make sure, God, I, I, want, I just want to be on track. I don't, want to be, I don't want to go down this way when I'm supposed to be going this way. See, through your prayers, you are intimate with God. And you talk to him about these things. You talk to him about your journey. God, this is, I want to do what you called me to do. Do that. Just, just, just always, just always be evaluating and re-evaluating. It's like, it's like driving down the highway. And you know, you may be, the, the interstate may be totally straight, but you know, you don't, you know that you don't take your head off the wheel. Even though the interstate is totally straight. Just leave your hand right there, just in case you might need to tweak just a shade. Every once in a while, you just need to tweak a little bit. That's what I'm talking about. I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm doing the will of God. I'm doing what you're supposed to do, but I just keep my hand on the wheel. I just stay on my knees, keep my hand on the wheel, make sure I just need to do a little tweaking every once in a while. That's what, that's what we want to do. We, we want to do that. I don't know if you're in this room today. You may be the prodigal that left home. You may be the one that stayed home. I don't know. But either way, fix it. Either way, fix it. If you're the one that's left home, then swallow your pride, get up and go home. If you're the one that's at home, go get on your knees and make sure being where you are, you're in line with God's word. Fix your attitude on the inside so that the Father can work in you what he wants to do. Every head's bowed, every eye's closed. Father.